Christ, the honor is yours. The praise is yours on today. And God, we bless you in this house. We thank you for this opportunity to stand before your people, to minister the word of God. Lord, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway forever. Your word is settled in heaven. It is tried and it is proven. As silver tried in the fire seven times. Your word is tried on today. And God, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. I pray now, God, that this sweet anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this room, Lord, would rest upon your servant. Lord, that I would preach according to your ability today and not of myself. God, that the words that are spoken, Lord, will be food for the souls of your people. That you and all things may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift your hand and say, Lord, Lord I receive your word. Receive your come on, tell me, Lord, Lord I, I receive your word. Receive your now come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, just help me sing the chorus of this song.
the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't normally call people praise the Lord, but I got to say, didn't you preach it today? Hallelujah. Somebody come on and give God praise.
service on yesterday. Praise the Lord. They served breakfast and lunch, cleaned up. Amen. And so everything was in order. Praise God. Everyone I talked to explained to me how impressed they were with the hospitality that they received at Holy Temples. Amen. So if you were not able to be here, you should be really happy because that was a representation of you. But your name is on record somewhere and you want that place to be just right. Yeah. Amen. And that is they did it with the spirit of excellence on yesterday. So let's come on. Praise God one more time for the hospitality. Amen. And last of all, I want you to know how much I appreciate being your pastor. Amen. I know y'all said y'all appreciate me being your pastor. But amen. And I thank you for the gift on last week that was so thoughtful and so kind of you. But I really want you to understand how much I appreciate being your pastor. I thank God for the opportunity to lead you. Amen. You don't have to submit to me. Amen. You could go and be anywhere else. But you are here, amen, under my leadership, and I thank God for you. So give yourselves a great God bless you today. <laughs> Praise God. Now we got all that out there, but y'all ready to have a little more church? Come on and lift your hand and shout hallelujah. Need that to resonate in someone's spirit. 
Let's start over again. Jesus. Jesus. The Word made flesh. Jesus said unto him, What? To whom? Yeah. To him that believeth. Yeah. 24 says what? Yeah. And straightway he cried out and said what? Yeah. Said with tears, Lord, I believe. Yeah. Help out my unbelief. Clap your hands for the reading of God's word today. Grab your lady by hand, my friend, and sit down. Squeeze it real tight.
Everybody had a different situation. But so what? There was really no proof that this is the position you got to be in or this is the condition you got to be in in order for God to give your church that free. That's right. That's right. So we're basing our belief on, what did I say? Belief that is not based on proof. Alright. In a strong, unshakable belief in something, especially without proof or evidence. Your conviction is so strong. Your conviction is so great that you look at the impossible and say, you are possible. You look at that thing that is invisible and you see it before you ever see it. Why? Because you have faith. Somebody shout faith. Your conviction is so strong. Your belief becomes unshakable. So you look at the worst of situations and you still say, I believe God. I believe God is able. Can you imagine Martha and Mary and Lazarus had just been put in the tomb and they seal the tomb and Jesus shows up four days late and they said, Master, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. But Jesus began to minister to them and let them know, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I know my brother going to get up in the last day. He going to get up in the general resurrection of the saints. No, Martha. He going to get up before then. Yeah. He going to live again. Yeah. And I'm going to see to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord thank you. There was no evidence. For four days he had been in the tomb. There was no evidence of life. There was no evidence that he would live again. Everything, all the circumstances stacked themselves against their faith. But your faith has to be stronger than what you see. Did you hear me today? Your be stronger than your illusion. Yeah. Your faith has to be stronger than your perception. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Nothing should supersede the power and the strength of your faith. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. So, I believe today should be your statement. I believe, I believe. without proof, without proof. What is said what is will manifest. Will manifest. Did y'all get that? Yes. In other words, I believe that what's said is coming to pass even though I don't see it. Right. Even though there's no proof that it's going to happen, I believe that it will happen. Yes. Because one thing about it, the scripture said God is not a man that he should lie. Right. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. Yes. You better just start looking for it. You better get ready for it. You better get prepared. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we look at Hebrews 11 6. I'm moving, I'm moving. Y'all pray with me today. 11 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible. Yes. It cannot be done. Yes. It cannot come to pass. Yes. It cannot be visible. It cannot be seen if you don't believe God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Yes. We can't satisfy God. Mm-hmm. Just before we get to this scripture, Enoch had the testimony that he pleased God. And because he pleased God, the scripture says what? He was translated right. from life to eternity. Yes. That he did not see death. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So without faith, we cannot please God. He that cometh to God must believe, 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 have faith that what? He is. He is. He is. Not was. Not will be. He is. <laughs> and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. 
Can I deal with that for me? Come on and shout, He is. God is sovereign. You got to have a relationship with God to know these things. You got to spend time with God to know these things. See, you can't come in here and, and shout and dance on the anointing of others. Can I deal with you for just a few minutes? You can't come in here in the see and, and, and shout and hallelujah and tap dance all over the place on the anointing and the faith of other people. You can't do it based on the relationship of somebody else. Come on. Yes, yes. Let me help you understand this order. We have a deacon who is in charge of service, who is responsible for leading the service, for leading us into the presence of the Lord, for setting the atmosphere so that when the pastor stands to preach the word of God, it's not a struggle, it's not a strain, but it's easy because the anointing is here and the presence of God has already been established in this place. But you know what? You have a part. Because what did I say? His job is to conduct the service. His job is to lead the service. His job is to make sure that we follow things. And, and sometimes when it ain't the spirit in it, you got to know when to move the service on. Uh oh, y'all ain't talking to me. You got to know how to move the service on so that you don't kill the spirit that's in the service. That you don't drive out the anointing that's in the service. Because the scripture lets me know no flesh is going to glory in his sight. And so when we get up in flesh, it drives the spirit of God out of the church. Now oh, ain't talk to me. So his job is to simply facilitate the service. But you have a job to do as well. Right. Your job is to follow the facilitator. Right. And you don't just follow the facilitator on Sunday when you get here. But you've already been facilitating the presence of God in your house. You've already been facilitating and welcoming God's spirit into your life throughout the week. Yeah. So that when we come together on Sunday, yeah. nobody has to pump us. Yeah. Nobody has to prime us. Nobody has to tell us, lift your hand. Nobody has to tell you, open your mouth. Nobody has to tell you anything because you knew, you remember that experience you had with God earlier in the week. Oh, Lord, I thought y'all were ready. I thought y'all were ready. Hallelujah. See, I can tell some of y'all ain't been in prayer all week. Because you're trying to figure out what is he talking about. Hallelujah. But when you've been starving for the presence of God. When you've been hungry for the power of God. When you've been thirsting for the presence of God. When you get there, nobody has to give you an advance notice that God is here. over and tell somebody I feel God here. Nobody have to tell you, hey baby, you baby, wake up God in the room. Nobody got to shake you and you and tell your baby God is here. But you know for yourself. I'm trying to help your mind today. I'm trying to help your faith today. I'm trying to help your spirit. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is sovereign. We understand when we've been with God, when we've talked with God, when we've experienced God, we know that God is sovereign. Yes. You don't just learn that simply by reading the Bible. Amen. But you gotta take what you read, you gotta take knowledge and make application of it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Jesus. What did James say? Faith, just like the body is dead without the spirit, so is faith without work. It's dead, y'all. If you don't get up and do something, you're going to stay in the shape you in. That's why the poor lepers men said, Why sit we here till we die? Lord, help us. I'm already trying to preach. I wish y'all would just pray with me for a little while longer. Having so.
supreme rank. That means God is above all power. God exceeds the ability of all because He is sovereign God. Hallelujah. The Philistines were, were, uh, were there taunting the people of God. Goliath breathing out threats and defying the armies of God. But what did David say? Who is, because David had been in the presence of God. Y'all remember that, right? David was a man after God's own heart. And what did the scripture say? When Samuel came to anoint David, the Spirit of the Lord came on him that day forward. Yes. That's right. Yes. So when he walked out and saw this giant standing in the valley, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What are you doing over here cowering now? What are you doing over here hiding behind the bushes? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has defied the living God? Yes. Oh my God. He ain't got no power. He's uncircumcised. Remember the circumcision represented the blessing, the covenant of Abraham is on me. Because I have the sign. Yes. I have the token. Yes. It reminds me that God is with me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because God is with me. Yes. Who can stand against me? Yes. Who can stand against me? Yes. Oh, saints of God, we get that in our spirit today. We might sleep a little more at night. Yes. Huh? Yes. We might, we might just worrying when things don't work out as we desire. Right. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Next we got to understand God is omnipotent. Yes. All power is in his hands. Yes. All power. Come on say all power. All you know what I like about that? That means it's all his yes. all the time. Yes. And there is no nothing that can stand against you. Yes. No power above his power. Yes. This is going to build your faith today. Yes, Some of you are going to walk out of here and get a testimony about his time next week. Yes. Because this message is going to help your faith. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. The power is infinite. Hallelujah. You know, uh, my power is finite. I can pick this up, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I might be able to lift it, maybe. That's a big maybe. Yeah. Over my head. <laughs> It's a light thing for God. Yeah. Did you hear me today? Yeah. See, gravity, uh, uh, because of the weight of this object, gravity resists my strength. Yeah. The weight of this will resist my strength. Yes. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad to know Hallelujah. nothing can resist the power of God.
comes this way of God's craftsmanship. <laughs> they, they can show us God's handiwork. He strategically placed every one of those stars where they are. And what did man do? He went up and sized it up. Oh, that big dip, that little dip, that go that. The bad, the polaris. Thank you, Lord. Worshiping the moon. Worshiping the sun. Worshiping the stars. But guess what? They worshiping God. See, y'all, man can get so ignorant sometimes.
Job said, I'm gonna maintain my integrity. Hey. I know he just trying to <laughs> If you cannot believe his attributes, his characteristics, and his person, you cannot please him. I want you to know today that unbelief is sin. Unbelief is sin. You know what unbelief says? Unbelief says God can do it. Uh oh, I messed somebody up right there. It messed you up to help you get better. Unbelief is sin. That means you tell God, I don't believe you ain't. When Jesus said, all things, Lord, that's impossible. So when you don't believe God, anything that is not of faith, the scripture says, it is sin. That's in Romans. If it's not of faith, it is sin. And he that is born of God does not commit sin. Because his seed remains in him. When you have the Holy Ghost... You can look at a cancer diagnosis and say, what is this? It's straight from the devil. I'm healed in Jesus' name.
Numbers. Matthew 7. 7 through 11. Ask. And it shall be given. Seek. Not just look, y'all. Seek. And so that's all I did. 
Uh oh. But I read about the opposite of sexual. Yeah. And fervent prayer. That's right. That means when I don't get it standing up, I might sit down. If I don't get it sitting down, I might get on my knees. If I don't get it on my knees, I'm going to lay prostrate before. When we 
ask anything according to his will, what? He hears, he hears us. Come on, say, God, listen when I talk. That's why you better be careful what you say. Oh. Huh? You walk around gossiping about people, God hear you. Oh, oh y'all done got quiet. It's time to shout and dance now. When you know you've been living right, you ought to be up praising God. God listening to everyone. So that for that for we know that when we pray, He listens. He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know we all we got confidence, y'all. We got faith today that whatever we ask. We have the petition. Our request, grant. Y'all didn't catch that. Y'all don't even have checklists. I want this, 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 and this. When I pray and ask him, it's grant. I'm, I'm moving on from asking to receiving. Faith in his word. Faith in his ability. Let me remind you something right quick. Second King chapter 3. Scripture says, Jehoram got with Jehoshaphat because the children of Moab, the king of Moab, rebelled against Israel. And said, Will you go down here and fight with us? To defeat this enemy. Yeah. That's why you gotta be careful who you partner with. Right. He partnered with the man that did not honor God. And the scripture says that they went down seven days. They took a journey for seven days in the wilderness. No water, nothing. Jehoram said, well, you know what? I'm convinced God brought us out here to die. Jehoram said, well, I should live yeah. and not die. Yeah. Where's the prophet of God? He got a word from God in his mouth. I just need to hear. If I can just get to the prophet of God, yeah. I know that's a word for me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. God died and found Elijah. Mm. Elisha. Mm. Scripture said, Elisha told him before I can tell you what God said. Yeah. Bring me a mess. Bring me a mess. Bring me a mess. Lord have mercy. Bring me a mess. Put a little music on what I'm saying. Come on, give me a mess. I'm gonna tell you what the Lord said.
that we see it as an opportunity for God to show us his glory and show us his power. Yeah. You believe that? Look at that. Chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's a king. Let me just help you. We're not going to bow. We're not going to worship. That's right. But we got faith. If we stand for God, He's going to stand for us. We got faith. And we're just not going to bow. We want you to know that the God we serve, He's able, more than able, to deliver us out of the furnace. Because they knew where they were headed. But if He does, know this, we will not bow. So what did they do? Heated the flames up one seven times hot and cast them in. And as soon as the heat started dying down, they opened the furnace and looked. The king sat down. I know we put three in, but I see four walking. Walking. In the midst of your affliction, the Lord have mercy on you. In the midst of what the devil thought was going to take you out, you walked in. Oh, Jesus. Your clothes, your clothes aren't even hurt up. Your, your hair is not even singed.
Christ.